Okay, so it's 10 a.m. So we're gonna get started. We we got a we got a jam schedule today, like I said. So we're gonna get started right on time. It is recorded, so anyone that comes in a little bit late will be able to see this and and say uh, <laughs> and say that they realize this. But uh, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is Nathan. I'm with Digital Ed, and I've been with Digital Ed for a little under a year now on the revenue team. Uh, this is Polina. Polina, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi everyone. I'm Paulina Peskov. I've been with Digital Ed for about two years now. I'm the product owner for content. Awesome. So thank you all for joining us so much. This is the first of many of the digital ed sponsored webinars. Uh, today is content with Mobius, building your custom STEM course. So a little bit of housekeeping before we jump in. We are, we are covering content today, but if afterwards you wanted to see more of the math engine in action and cover some of the broader Mobius platform, uh, we do have a live group demo that runs bi-weekly in the U.S. and Canada and monthly in the U.K., the next one for North America is uh, on April 1st. That's not an April Fool's joke. It is actually on April 1st. It's pre presented by our very own Steve Christman. So um, you can attend that if you'd want to see a little bit more. And also uh, stay tuned for the next date that becomes available in the UK. Uh, for an agenda today, we do have three parts. Uh, we have a small presentation to begin with, uh, a little bit about digital ed and a lot about the content, uh, both its position in the market relative to publishers and OERs, as well as why we built this way. And then secondly, we're actually going to step behind the curtain and inside of Mobius to reveal the ease of actually building out a STEM course, utilizing the features and the content that you'll discover in Mobius today, as well as after that, provide an excellent case study. Without further ado, I'll pass things over to Polina. Perfect. Thank you, Nate. Right. So today I will be talking to you about the selection of pre-built turnkey content that we have with Mobius. And I will be showing you how you can edit and customize it to fit your syllabus. We'll also show a real life example of how it was done with our, one of our customers. So for those of you um, who don't know us, we are a Canadian ed tech company headquartered in Ontario with offices and partners in Europe, Asia, and Australia. Our innovative digital learning platform Mobius is used by over 300 major schools around the globe. Um, I'm sure you can recognize some of the logos on the map there. With over 400,000 yearly class enrollments and over 17 million automatically graded assessments submitted by students to date. Mobius is a cloud-based platform with a yearly subscription. Um, it allows to author and deploy interactive digital courses with dynamic at and automatically graded assessments. It can be used to teach classes in any discipline but it's uniquely equipped with a vast set of mathematical and STEM capabilities. It's also mobile friendly and offers full LTI connectivity to all major LMSs out there. And of course, it can be used to teach classes fully online or in a hybrid fashion. Now, one of the most common questions that um, arise when teaching STEM disciplines online is how do you ensure students' understanding of STEM concept beyond just content consumption, beyond memorization of content? So I'm wondering, Nate, can we kick off a little poll to see what our attendees do on a normal basis? Um, yeah. Is it regular homework and practice? Is it live discussions and Q&A? Is it asking a lot of open-ended questions to make sure the conceptual understanding is there? Or maybe something else. So drop it in the chat and we may be able to look at it and discuss later in the Q&A part. Okay, so another five seconds or so. Perfect. I see regular homework and practice is in the lead, unsurprisingly. Live discussions and Q&A, something um, that is very common to do in a live class setting on campus, of course. We've all taken some classes where there were tutorials with um, either instructor or a tutor to answer questions, to go over extra problems and so on. Um, asking open-ended questions is very important to check uh, students' conceptual understanding. But the question is, how do you do that when teaching a math course online? So with Mobius, what we're trying to do is to go beyond content retention model of learning material and into conceptual understanding. So let's talk a little bit about both. We've all taken a class in the past where we've been given some kind of static learning material, maybe um, lecture slides from our instructor, or maybe we were directed to some sections of textbook. 
And there we would learn the material. There would be an example of a problem worked out for us and perhaps some questions at the back to practice. Probably at the end of the week, we would be given a quiz to see if we could actually solve any of those problems ourselves. Now, of course, this is a model that has been working in, for educators for decades and centuries. But one problem that arises with this is, is that it heavily relies on content memorization. The student often will memorize um, the way to solve a problem and kind of learn to do it to enough to pass a quiz but may or may not get the overall understanding of how this problem or how this topic ties into the rest of the course or the rest of the discipline they're learning. So what we're doing with Mobius um, is trying to provide all the tools necessary for you as instructors of courses to ensure conceptual understanding. And we do it in several ways. Mobius provides the opportunity to have interactive lessons. Um, they are web-based, ba web uh, coded in HTML5. Therefore, you can embed a lot of interactivity into it. There's a selection of math apps that come with it, especially with the content selection that we have. There's a feature called interactive slideshows where you can embed your pre-recorded uh, lec lecture slides with voiceovers and even have the ability to pause and ask a question while going through those slides. You can also embed a variety of other media files into interactive lessons. You can also have inline questions and all of the content in our selection have this as a feature and we're gonna look at this um, in a little bit. But this is where students will be asked to, or will be given an opportunity to answer questions while going through the lesson. Um, not necessarily waiting for the formal quiz or formal assessments to answer questions. Um, these questions are great because they check students' understanding before they get too far into the lesson or into the topic so that they can check if they understand. If they got, got the question wrong, they can go back and reread, try again, and so on. And with our formal assessments, um, in addition to being automatically graded, we also have the powerful mathematical engine at the back to allow you to ask open-ended math questions. For example, a question may ask, you know, provide any equation of a line that passes through a certain point. As you can imagine, there's a myriad, almost an infinite number of correct answers to that question. And this really will, um, will ensure that students understand what's being asked and they can provide a, an equation of their choice and the mathematical um, engine at the back will assess their answer and see if it is in fact correct and if that equation provides a line that passes through a certain point. This is not something that's typically possible with simple numerical questions that may be available in other platforms where the right answer is pre-programmed and only one answer uh, can be corrected as, as right. We also have a myriad of questions that accept math equivalency. So you can ask a question where uh, a student is allowed to input their answer in any form, for example, decimal or fraction. Um, it also understands other kinds of math equivalency. And we can talk, we can spend a whole other webinar talking about all the different uh, math question types that Mobius provides and general math functionality. And we probably will in the future, so look out for emails for, from us for other webinars. Um, but Mobius understands math expressions and formulas, equations. Um, you can ask questions with numeric answer. You can require students to um, input a unit as a, and grade it as correct answer. And you can set some tolerances to their responses. Um, it understands trigonometry, logarithm, exponentials, differential equations, uh, many other mathematical uh, capabilities, and also some STEM science disciplines as well. For example, free body diagrams for physics or chemical equation questions where students are um, able to answer, put in a whole chemical equation, and it will understand whether you know the reactants for example whether they put it a plus b or b plus a it will still understand that that is correct answer 
um, which is ensured by our mathematical engine at the back. But today I'd like to um, focus on the content selection that we have pre-built for you that comes with our platform. So let's talk a little bit more about content and what has been available to instructors so far, just uh, out there to you guys. Of course, one of the most popular uh, content sources for studying material for students are textbooks uh, provided by major publishers. These are great because they provide turnkey content. They have trusted pedagogy. You may have been using the same textbook for years. You know exactly what to expect in it, what questions are in it. However, these typically require faculty to lock in for three or five terms. Uh, so it's a long-term commitment required by, by the publisher. Textbooks are typically locked in in their pedagogy. So you are not able to edit the body of the lesson or the questions that are in it. We all know that prices of textbook can be quite expensive for students. And while most publishers offer some type of technology component, they tend to fall short for the STEM capabilities and don't give a lot of permission to modify content or create your own or to ask those um, in-depth open-ended questions um, in, uh, in, with that textbook. Another popular resource that uh, some of you may use are open education resources. Um, these are great because they allow faculty to be in control of your courses. They're usually editable. Um, you can make changes to them as required and they're free. However, they typically lack official support channels. Adopters of open content rely on community driven sources like social platforms, forums, message boards, uh, to discuss the pedagogy or maybe errors find, found in the text. It's, it may be hard to get a hold of someone to talk about the content, except the author themselves, which of course is one person trying to serve um, a big crowd, uh, which is not a very efficient support uh, model. And while they may be available online in a downloadable form, like a Word doc or a PDF, they lack the interactive platform capabilities to have the auto-graded assessments, to ask questions, to have a turnkey solution uh, with grades being generated. And of course, another popular uh, source for studying materials for students are you know, your own course notes that you wrote for your course. These will be great because they're tailored to your syllabus, right? Um, some of you may have designed the course yourself and you know exactly what needs to go in it and your course notes match it. And they're tailored to a specific audience. For example, if you're teaching calculus for sciences uh, versus calculus for business, they will have different worked out problems and real life applications in the notes. But of course, these take a lot of time and resources to create. And they are probably static um, in the form of either lecture slides or a Word file or maybe LaTeX. Um, so they also lack the, the powerful online platform with assessments associated with it. So today, we're really curious to know, what do you provide as a primary content source for your students? Um, Nate, can we kick off another, another poll here and see what uh, everyone's using? Yeah, just throwing it up there now. Perfect. And actually, uh, Polina, while that poll is going, we did have uh, one question in the Q&A. Sure. Uh, Ken, and it came from Jane Sutherland. Thank you, Jane. Uh, can I give students notes to use while using Mobius? Of course. So when you adopt either Mobius with or without our uh, content, you can upload your own course notes and either have them um, as part of the content pack that you've adopted or separately. You can also, you also have the option of linking to them uh, from your LMS or directing students to Mobius and having everything in one place, your course notes and pre-built assessments that are auto-graded. Perfect, thank you. You are welcome. So I'll close the poll now. Sure. And share so the this is great. Um, I had a little suspicion that uh, option D combination of the above will be very uh, popular among instructors and attendees of this um, of this webinar. 
So of course you want to you want to diversify the um, uh, different sources that students can go to or rely on for studying for the course. And the great thing about content that comes with Mobius is that when you adopt the platform with the starter bundle, you do have the benefits of all three of the publisher textbook of the open education resources and your own course notes. So in addition to all the mathematical capabilities and all the questions you can ask in assessments in Mobius, the content that we provide has a trusted pedagogical content, um, just like other textbooks that are provided by uh, publishers. They are turnkey solutions. So they are fully built out with lessons already there, organized into units and um, auto-graded assessments in them ready to be taken by students and sent to gradebook. But you also have the freedom to edit, enhance, and make it your own, uh, which is the, the biggest selling point of open education resources out there. In contrast to open education, a lot of open education resources, we provide round the clock support in all time zones. So there's always somewhere there on the call that you can ask a question that it can, you can guide you through um, maybe building out your course, maybe adding some features that you like or anything um, in terms of tweaking a content pack. And we also co provide content alignment and onboarding. And we're gonna talk about that in more detail um, in a bit. Now let's, uh, let's have a closer look at what we actually provide as a starter bundle of content. We have about 25 content packs available um, with Mobius. They span um, a range of disciplines across calculus, algebra, linear algebra, physics, statistics, financial math, and we also have a CMC suite by University of Waterloo here in Ontario, if you're familiar with that, which is a suite of remedial um, review sort of of high school math. We have more coming in 2021. In fact, as soon as May of this year, we're gonna be expanding our selection. And we also maintain our content. So once a certain content pack is released, you can expect it to be um, renewed or updated within a year by authors. So they, they take in the feedback that you provide on whether something needs to be changed, where maybe you found some um, typo, let's say, and they also provide a lot more content. So they add questions, they add interactivity. So there's regular updates to the content packs as well. Now, the best part about content packs with Mobius is really your freedom. It's the freedom to make any edits that you'd like to the content. So once you adopt one of the content packs and make it your local copy in the platform, it, became, it becomes yours. It becomes your intellectual property for as long as you have access to Mobius. You have um, access to all the source files. You can tweak questions, even the algorithms behind questions that allow them to be randomized. You can also combine multiple packs and build out your custom course. And we're gonna look at, at an example in a bit where um, perhaps you have a unit in calculus and a unit on review of algebra and a little bit of stats. You can combine two, three, as many packs as you want to build out your custom STEM course. And you have a freedom to use it, any of them as a full course, or you can use them for assessment only, or just link certain parts of the course into your LMS. So without further ado, I'd like to jump into the platform and show you a few of these packs in there. But before I do that, I'd like to show you a couple of great resources. First place uh, that's great to start with when learning about our selection of content is digitalad.com slash content. Um, and the link will be dropped into the chat for you. But this is a page that has detailed information about all the content packs that we offer. It's a long page, I'm not gonna scroll through it all, but just to give you a sense of what kind of information you can find here, let's click into linear algebra, let's say. On this page, I will see some screenshot from the content pack uh, so that I can kind of see the style and the look and feel of this course. 
It gives me a short description of what's in it and perhaps maybe who the intended audience is uh, for this pack. So you can see from the description of linear algebra, for example, that this course has a focus on application in sciences. So this is something like an applied linear algebra course. It gives me the topics that are in this content pack. And I can see that this one was uh, created by University of Waterloo here in Ontario. Now to gain a little bit more understanding of the look and feel of any of the content packs, you can visit digitaled.com slash demo. And here we actually embedded um, a little bit of the Mobius platform right onto the page. So I can see here um, a few resources that I can go through. If you click into Welcome to Mobius, it will show you a typical lesson and a few features that can be included in the lessons. But most importantly, since today we're talking about content, for any particular discipline, there's a sample lesson of all content packs that we have. So for example, linear algebra that, that we just looked into, I can find it in the menu. I can click into that um, sample lesson and I can actually see what the experience would be like for the students. Um, this is literally a lesson taken out of the content pack. This one is on the norm of a vector. And I can see that, you know, what the pedagogy looks like. I can see that there's these inline questions right in the middle of the uh, lesson. And I can click around and kind of see what the other page, pages look like and perhaps look through other content packs. However, I do want to show it to you in the actual platform. So I'm going to go over to Mobius. This is a typical login screen that will be similar both for you as instructors, administrators, and for students. Uh, my credentials are all, already filled in here, so I'm just going to log in. What we see here is a homepage. Um, again, this would be similar for you and for your students. Um, but depending on the role or permissions, um, you can see classes under different sections. A couple of on the top here are the courses where I am the instructor. Here in the middle, we have a big section with all of the content packs. And here my role is instructor plus create, which is um, similar to instructor, but gives me a little bit more administrative privileges. And your students will see courses popping up on the screen under classes that I am taking. So let's go into one of the content packs and see how they look like. I'm actually going to go into advanced functions and pre-calculus first. This is a typical home screen of a class. So there's some housekeeping items here, like the description of the course, the name of my instructor, in the calendar, once, once you set the upcoming dates of assessments and whatnot, they, they would appear for me here. And the main uh, page here really has the course content. On the left, I have the menu of all the units that I can go through while taking this course. Uh, you can make them available all at once, or you can release them uh, week by week if you choose to. And I'm already clicked into unit one here, so I can see the um, list of lessons that I will be going through while taking this class. So let's, um, let's go into, let's say unit eight sums and difference of functions, just to see what a typical lesson looks like. So again, uh, consistent with the rest of the Mobius interface on the left is the menu of all pages that I would be going through uh, while taking this lesson. I can see that starting with page one, there's time codes um, in the names of the lessons. So that tells me that these pages contain what we call interactive narratives. So what the instructors, actually the authors of this content pack have done is they pre-recorded um, a slideshow with a voiceover and if I click into it, it will actually start playing. Study, we have examined the behavior and discussed. I hope everyone could hear that, but the instructor was um, uh, starting to teach this particular lesson. And if I can, if I scroll through it, it will literally take me through a topic with worked out examples. Um, in a lot of packs, sometimes you will find um, a place where the slideshow, uh, slideshow stops 
and ask the student a question before proceeding to the next slide. So I can see on the left that the lesson is uh, structured with a few sections. There's a wash section with these pre-recorded um, interactive narratives and some interactive um, applications for me to try as a student. So if I click into investigation, for instance, I will be given an opportunity to try one of these concepts in an interactive fashion um, so that the concepts sink in a little bit more. And this is where, this is one of the examples of how we ensure conceptual understanding of content rather than simple memorization or content retention. And, you know, I can click, click around, I can see how different uh, plots look like. Um, there's a lot of things I can do here to really make sure that I understood what I just learned in the previous pages. I see that in this particular lesson, there's actually a second page with another interactive activity that I can try. And in a lot of these lessons, there will also be a page called alternative format. So when you adopt one of these content packs, and perhaps you're not a big fan of the pre-recorded um, voiceovers, and you would like to provide this same material in a sort of web page format, the alternative format page basically lists all of the same content that was in the interactive narratives, but in a HTML5 format. So you can pick and choose which one to use in your course when, when, when you're building it out, or you can leave both to accommodate both auditory and visual learners. The review section of this lesson will have practice questions. So this is where we're talking about inline questions embedded right into the lesson um, that are not formal assessments, but are given to students as a practice to check their understanding before they move forward. Now, you will notice that there are two buttons on the screen here. Screen here. How did I do? And try another. So let's say I'm just um, putting in some answers and I know this is wrong, but just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to check, how did I do? Did I get that right? Well, of course I didn't. I need to brush up on my functions here, clearly. But what's really neat about this is not only tells the students whether they got it right or wrong, but also gives them detailed feedback with the solution of this question. So that I can, I can see how this it was solved. I can go through the steps. I can find the place where, okay, I see that where I went wrong in step two here. And I can try it again with that knowledge. Of course, the feedback that you see there, you can turn it on and off, right? Um, usually, all the questions in the content packs that we have, have it uh, pre-built in into questions. And usually, they're turned on when the questions are used in the lessons so that students can see them, students can work through them and try again. But of course, they're usually hidden when the question is part of the formal assessments where the grade is sent to the gradebook. Now, I did want to try it again, and try clicking try another button will actually not only let me try the question again, but will also generate a new set of values given in the variables of the question. So pay attention to the numbers given as part of the question. And let's see what happens if I click try another. You can see that a new set of values have, have been generated. So most of the uh, questions in, across our content packs are coded with an algorithm behind it to allow randomization. So I can try it uh, multiple times. Every time uh, the system will generate a new set of values so that I can, I can really try it um, many, many times before I really know that I got it right. Now, a lot of our content packs, uh, like I said, also have auto-graded assessments. And Across different packs, they can be structured in different ways. But let's just go into one of the content packs really quickly and see what it can look like. Algebra and trigonometry is one of the OpenStax textbook that uh, we have what we call mobified. So algebra and trigonometry by OpenStax is an open education resource that's available online in a web format or a downloadable PDF. And what we've done is we've taken the entire textbook into Mobius and we've made it interactive and have auto-graded assessments. So if I go into um, any 
any lesson here, any, any unit actually to start with, I see that there's assignments after each lesson. So you see after section uh, 9.1 lesson, there's a section 9.1 assignment. So this means there's quizzes built into this course after each lesson. And again, you can make them send, send the grades to the gradebook to be formally graded, or you can leave them as practice uh, homework assignments too. And for every chapter, there's also a review test and a practice test. So um, there are a lot of um, content packs in our selection. And at the end of the presentation today, we'll do a quick poll to see which ones of these you'd like to see in more detail. But for now, what I want to show you is how easy it is to bring stuff over uh, to build out your course. So I'm going to go into my personal sandbox class. It is empty right now. I haven't created any content here and I haven't brought anything in from Starter Bundle either. So this is something that you would see when you're first uh, create your class and are ready to populate it with content. Because I'm given the instructor privileges here, I have the ability to go into content repository. And there's a few things available to me here. Under sources, I see the starter bundle of content. And this is all the 25 packs um, that we have in our selection. And once you have access to it and new packs come, come in or are released in our selection, they will automatically appear on the list here, as do new additions. So you will notice that the names of some of these include E's and V's, so additions and versions. So as they're being updated in our uh, selection, they automatically pop in here and are available to you. So let's say I'm teaching something like um, college algebra. And perhaps I have been using OpenStax College Algebra, which is uh, what this pack is. And I know that it fits my syllabus 95 to 100% um, alignment. So what I can do is I can click clone into my class and this will populate my empty sandbox class with the entire um, content pack. So all the units will appear there on the front page. All the lessons will be available. And really, it can take me just a day to set it up, um, put some dates in on the assignments or formal assessments, enroll students, and it's ready to go. Now, I'm not going to click clone into my class right now because it takes a couple of minutes to populate a class. But I do want to show you other options you, can, you have with this content. Perhaps I'm building a course where I do not need the entire college algebra textbook. I just, I'm looking for a chapter on functions specifically. So I can find it on the list. Uh, as you can see, it's very transparent what content is in the content pack without making any local, local copy. So I can preview before I can make, I make my decision. I find the relevant chapter on the list. Chapter three functions looks exactly like what I'm looking for. So I can clone it into my class and only chapter three will appear in my sandbox class. Or perhaps I'm specifically looking for a lesson on domain and range. I can click into that lesson and clone it into my class and only lesson 3.2 uh, in this case will appear in my sandbox class. Or, <laughs> um, and I'm just adding and adding more options to you, uh, perhaps I'm building out a quiz and I'm just looking through the entire starter bundle for uh, questions to borrow. Uh, because I don't want to uh, create them from scratch. There's a vast selection of topics and uh, lessons that I can borrow from. So I go into domain and range lesson, I look through the questions, and I, I can actually preview them and see exactly what they're asking and how they behave and what the correct answer is and the feedback and say, yes, this is a question I want in my quiz. And then I can clone only this one question into my local class. And the beauty of it is that it becomes my own copy. So let's, let's actually do that right now. I'm going to clone this question into my class. It only took a second and it's available for me in the content repository. So now that I see it under my, as you can see here, I see it under my current class, 
if I go into questions, it's there for me. And I have the ability to tweak it any way I like if I need to. So let's say I do not need that title try it number two on it. I can click edit and I have the access to the source file of this question. I can take this um, heading off or I can change it. I can go as far as tweaking the algorithm behind the response area of this question. I can work with HTML because all questions and lesson pages are coded in HTML. I also have um, access to source. And if I'm really versed in HTML5, I can work out of here. But as you can see, you don't need to because the toolbar of um, the editing toolbar on top is very comprehensive and really has all the functions that, let's say, um, sort of a word type document has for you to um, edit the page. I also have access to that feedback. So this is what students see when they clicked, how did I do? And it tells them, well, you either got it right or wrong. And this is the full solution to the question. I can tweak that as well if I want to. So I'm not going to save this now. I'm just going to click out of it. And I do want to show you other sources that are available to you as an instructor or curriculum designer or um, administrator. In addition to the starter bundle that uh, we see here, uh, all 25 packs being here and more to come, there's also a section called content templates. So if you've looked, if you're building your STEM course, uh, custom STEM course and you've looked through a selection of questions, you probably found most of the questions you needed and you've tweaked them and you put up the lessons. Perhaps you didn't find one or two that you were looking for. So another pl great place to look is content templates. Our team internally has uh, put together a selection of templates that you can get started with to build out your question. Um, we have some general question templates. You can see some examples here, you know, creating an inequality or factor of a trinomial or, or matrix multiplication and so on. And those open-ended questions are also available to you here um, in a selection of templates. So something like an invertible mat matrix question template or function satisfying a differential equation uh, template. Open-ended questions have powerful algorithms at the back to, to connect the, to the math engine and allow that grading of you know, a myriad of correct answers. So they take a little bit, uh, they're a little bit more involved to create. And that's why we've uh, put together some templates for you here. There's also a selection of plotting questions where students are asked to plot different things. For example, you know, uh, creating a plot of system of inequalities or plotting an ellipse. And what I personally really like is a selection of, of interactives. So those math apps that you can embed either into lesson pages or even into questions um, are, there's also a selection available for you here across many different uh, disciplines. Perhaps I'm looking for something a little more advanced in discrete mathematics, and I can see what's available for me there. And I see, actually, yes, Euler's identity is something I would love to have for my students to play around with um, on a lesson page. And again, as with anything else in, under sources, you can preview before you make the decision to make it your own. So I'm going to click on it. I see what the, what the interactive activity is like. I can see exactly how it behaves. And then I can make the decision whether to clone it into my class or not. So this wraps up the sort of the overview of the content um, selection that we have. Yeah, so actually, Polina, um... You've sourced some great pieces and, and like the content repository itself and the starter bundle. I do want to give a quick preamble before we jump into the case study. Um, I'm sure on everyone's mind right now and what they want to see is what does this look like in practice or what does this look like for me? And uh, so I'm just prefacing Polina reviewing this case study because we're a big fan of it. This is an excellent, excellent example of the type of service that Polina and her team provide to institutions worldwide day in and day out. And we actually just had a, a really quick comment in the chat regarding it being very hard to search for a topic and kind of all that noise that you see within the content repository. And uh, Faraday, you're about five minutes early on the presentation. We are going to review that quickly. I had a little
little bit later. So uh, sit tight, but uh, thank you so much and uh, enjoy this case study, please. This is uh, an excellent uh, example of what they work on uh, tirelessly. Sure, so one of the things I wanted to show you today is actually um, a course that one of our existing customers has built. So Jerome Heaven from Indiana Tech um, has graciously agreed for us to show his syllabus and the course he has built out. Jerome, Jerome, is here today. Jerome is here today. Hey, Jerome. Hi, Jerome. If you're here, <laughs> hi, and thank you. Please uh, let us know in the chat and uh, in the Q&A session, we can chat more. So what Jerome has sent to us is his syllabus for Foundation of Mathematics course. Um, if we look through this, the syllabus or the topic list of this course, we see that it involves a little bit of review of arithmetic and numeracy. Um, a little bit of algebra, and it actually touches on some data analysis, um, data graphs and statistics. So what um, Jerome has done through, uh, as a result of looking at our selection of content is actually building out a course um, based on two content packs. So he was able to combine, and I did mention before that you can mix and match any content from the selection, he has, created this particular course, and I'm literally on his uh, Mobius instance showing you the course he has built out of two content packs. Now, on the left here, and actually I'm gonna make this a little bit big, bigger for everyone to see. You can see that uh, the naming of the units is unique to his course, so he's renamed them to module one through six. But as an instructor, I can go to content repository and under course modules, I can see that the two packs he has combined to build out this course are numbers, geometry, algebra, and data, and introductory statistics for those later um, topics in the course that cover data and statistics. And actually, let's go back to the main page and let's go into a lesson to see how it looks like. I'm going to click into module one and you can see that the very familiar format and the lesson structure that we just saw earlier when we were reviewing advanced functions and pre-calculus, you know, you, you, you have your watch section with the interactive narratives, you have review questions with, you know, those inline questions and embedded interactive apps um, for students to do while taking this lesson. Um, so, you know, Jerome has let us know that it only took that took him and his um, part time curriculum designer under two months to build out this course out of the two uh, packs, and they did have the luxury of time, so they actually didn't have to take uh, full time months. It could be done sooner, but he also said that building out this course, um, Mathematics Foundation One, would have taken him and his uh, support team anywhere from six to eight months to build out if they were doing it from scratch. So being able to take those two content packs and use them as the starting material um, shaved off the time to under two months for him. However, what I should also note is that it may be a lot less than that too. It really depends on your syllabus. Um, and we're gonna talk about that in a bit, but just to wrap up this case study, Jerome has, has become a, an expert in building content in Mobius and is the go-to person in his department and in Indiana Tech and has helped uh, many other instructors set up their courses, uh, compile them, build out their custom solutions, and um, is, is proud to say that he's, uh, he's the expert in Mobius now within Indiana Tech. So big hi and big thank you for you, Jerome, to letting us use this uh, course as the case study today. So um, I do want to show you as the last part of this presentation, the document, the content coverage map that you will be getting um, at the end of this webinar. Um, this is a really comprehensive and detailed overview of every single content pack we have. Um, it's a little bit overwhelming, but I'll, I'll walk you through it. So basically on the left here, we have the list of content packs that are the same as the list on digitalad.com slash content. And for every single pack, it tells you in detail, you know, how many lessons are there? 
Are there those inline questions built into the lessons? Are there auto graded assessments included? So quizzes, practice, uh, practice tests, end of chapter tests where grades are sent automatically to the grade book. Are there any interactive narratives with those pre-recorded uh, voiceovers? Are there interactive math apps embedded into the lessons? And as you can see, most packs have them. And a lot of detail about the assessment. So as you can see from here, a pack can have you know, both auto-graded assessments and those inline questions. Uh, but the, the structure of the assessments in it really depends on the author of the course. Uh, something like pre-calculus here in the first row um, has both quizzes after each lesson and end of chapter review assignment and end of chapter practice test. And you can see that the number of questions in this pack is quite extensive. And then some other packs may have um, a weekly structure of assessments, weekly or bi-weekly quizzes or a combination of, you know, quizzes after each lesson and bi-weekly assignments. And that just depends on who the author of this course was and how um, the original instructor was teaching the course. One thing I should note um, before we go on is that the entirety of questions in the, st in the starter bundle across all packs is, can be viewed as one giant question bank because of the ability to mix and match and borrow certain elements from different packs, but also because the inline questions that are embedded into the lessons are really standalone questions in the repository. So you can leave them as a part of the lesson. You can also include them as a quiz without showing that feedback and with grades being automatically sent to gradebook. And you really have the ability to max and mix and match all of the assessment questions and all of the inline questions from any of the packs. Now, one more thing that this document will tell you, you will notice in the bottom, there's tabs for different disciplines. So I'm actually gonna go to calculus and what information is found here is de very detailed syllabi for every content pack. So not only let's say for pre-calculus, it will tell you the unit names and the lesson names, but also very detailed um, descriptions and list of keywords found in each uh, lesson. So let's say I'm building out a course, I found most of the topics I've been looking for, but I really need to see where a particular lesson is, let's say squeeze theorem. So I can go into this document, I can use the search function and I can look for squeeze theorem and voila, I see that it's covered by lesson 2.4 in calculus three for honors math. And I actually see that there's two occurrences of squeeze theorem. So I see that it's also um, covered in the lesson on limits of function at a point in calculus for sciences pack. So then I can go to the starter bundle under sources, I can click my previews, I can see what looks right and make the decision uh, what to bring into my personal class. So I see that uh, we're pretty, we're pretty uh, long along the way of the uh, webinar. So let's pause here and see if you have any questions. Yeah, so actually we'll, um, as part of the beginning of the Q&A, the, the portion of the webinar that has concluded is everything else, but we're going to kick off the Q&A uh, or investigative portion of the webinar. Um, so we do have about nine minutes left. If anyone needs to go, this is still going to be recorded and anyone that wants to hang out and have their questions uh, answered further or in further detail, uh, I, I can already see a few in the chat that we'll be able to get to. So we do even have uh, some team members on hand. Johnny, our product uh, marketing manager, is able to answer any mathematical functionality questions regarding Mobius. Um, but to help kick things off, uh, Plina, do you mind going back to the main screen with all the content packs and we'll throw up the final poll. And while we wait for the results from that, uh, while we wait for the results from that, we'll actually answer a few of the chat questions as we, as we can. So that's, uh, this is the, uh, the page we want. So the final poll is about to go up for everyone that's sticking around for the Q&A. Uh, feel free to answer which content pack you'd like for us to jump into and investigate. Uh, start kind of loading the Q&A and we'll try and answer as many as we can in the next uh, eight or minutes or whoever else wants to uh, stick around a little longer. We we have all day. <laughs> we're not we're just not leaving home. So we're ready to answer as many as we can. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, one, of the, one of the questions that we had was uh, 
how can personal content be shared in Mobius? And I think that's a really excellent question to answer. Um, I'd love to know a little bit more about what uh, the intent of sharing is, but um, mm -hmm. basically once you have the access to the platform, um, once you create your own classes, you can share it with other instructors in your own department and you can collaborate on any of the content. So first of all, first thing you can collab, so first, first way you can collaborate on is in any particular class, let's say I created that sandbox class, I can add other instructors who are also teaching this course and we can share the content in that way and we can create child classes to go in, to cover different sections of the course that we collectively teach together. But we can also share the content that we create. And you know, if I've created a chapter on functions and my colleague who also has the access to Mobius in the same department needs that content, I can, I can share it via simple export import, or there's a, another way to do it within the platform and uh, we can collaborate in that way as well. Awesome, so I'm just gonna stop the poll now. Mm -hmm. So okay. by a hair, I, by a hair, I think <laughs> uh, and then physics is actually in second, also by a very small fraction. So why don't we Perfect. show calculus series and answer questions as we can. And then again, anyone willing to hang around, we can go into physics and then later uh, any other ones that uh, people are interested in checking sure. out. Sure, sounds good. So calculus, uh, is a great question. Actually, before I click into any particular pack, I can show you that if you're interested in a particular discipline, this is another way that this document is really helpful because um, content packs are organized by discipline. So I can quickly look up which titles are calculus or pre-calculus related. And as you can see here, we have calculus one and two for sciences, and we have calculus three for honors math which can be used to build out a Calc 1, 2, and 3 series. But we also have some other ones like Calculus for Arts and Social Science, which is a first year course for sort of arts and business students, Calculus and Vectors, Pre-Calculus, and so on. Um, I'm going to go into Calculus 1 and 2 because um, that tends to be a very popular pack among our customers. And I see it right here. So let's see what it looks like. This pack actually covers two semesters worth of calculus. So it covers your typical calculus one and calculus two, and it has a, an additional introductory chapter on multivariable calculus at the end too, which is usually your calc three. Um, so when, you, when you're ready to adopt something like this, you can't, if you're just teaching calculus one, you can clone the first six units into your class, and teach that and then the other units into your other class for Calc 2. Or you can, if you're integrating with LMS or if, if it's fine for you in your workflow to just have students go to the same place, you can keep it as is and progress in the same class uh, through both semesters. Um, now this, this pack does have sort of all of the features that Mobius can offer. It does have inline questions, it has auto-graded assessments, um, interactive narratives, and math apps. And in terms of um, assessment structure, sorry, I'm in the wrong window here. Um, it does have a quiz after each lesson. And then there's bi-weekly assess assignments at the, at the back here too. So let's just go into um, just one of the lessons to see how it looks. Let's say modeling with derivatives. This particular uh, lesson has built as one continuous page. You can see there is a video embedded here just to illustrate a certain concept. We have obviously, you know, our pedagogy and um, images to, to show too. As we saw in the content coverage map, it does offer interactive narrative. So there's gonna be a place to stop and listen to an actual real life person explain the concepts and go through the slides in that way. There's also interactive activities built into this pack and you know you can play around, you can see if you understand what different values here uh, represent, in this case, population or um, population capacity. And like 
Many other packs, most packs, they have inline questions to check understanding. Um, oh, and I just happened to get that right, guys, <laughs> unintentionally, uh, to check students' understanding before they go on to the next topic. So that's hey, a Polina. quick overview of the look and feel of this particular pack. Yes, Polina, Nate? one one question in the Q&A that uh, I find pretty relevant, obviously, in regards to calculus is, will we be adding OpenStax calculus to the available content packs one day? That's an excellent question, actually. It is in our content roadmap right now and is being worked on. Um, I do not have the official release date, but we're expecting to have edition one of the entire OpenStax Calc series um, later this year. So please do reach out to us and we will be able to give you a little bit more information on the timing. I think is that uh, is that all for calculus? I think the next one. Well, hold on. Let me just give a quick uh, a pause here. We are at one hour. That is the a lot of time that we have for the session today. Uh, I can't thank everyone enough, especially Polina, the content team, and the marketing team for putting this together. Um, we really appreciate it. And then look out uh, in the future for incoming invites for other bite size webinars that we do or other group demos. And if you enjoyed seeing Mobius today, again, I encourage you to join our live group demos that run biweekly in North America and monthly in the UK. Um, but we'll stay on to cover any more questions that people have uh, or to review any more content packs. The second one was physics. So uh, we can go into that now. And if people are interested, we can keep answering questions. Perfect. Yes, uh, for sure. We can look at physics. Um, physics actually does happen to be one of the OpenStax textbooks. We do have a few already mobified. We have pre-calculus, we have algebra and trigonometry, college algebra, physics, a volume one for university, and introductory statistics as well. So physics um, volume one, we can go into and look just uh, how, it, how it looks, and what the students will experience. Let me do a quick um, search function. Here it is. There's so many packs, I get lost sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, again, we've gone, in, we've gone into the physics, mechanics, waves, and acoustics, which is volume one of University of Physics by OpenStax. It does cover um, vectors, motion, Newton's law, work and energy, linear momentum, there's a, honestly, there's too many units to even for me to read out loud. Um, so that's uh, 17 units all together. And a typical lesson, um, let's just go into chapter three, perhaps, and into lesson 3.3. You will notice that this time it prompted me for, you know, to start. It means that the author of this course put some uh, restrictions on the lesson. So um, this is the kind of uh, place where you can restrict a lesson to a certain date. So students cannot, um, let's say, access it until they've gone through the previous quiz or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and start. And this is a typical lesson from OpenStax. If you've seen OpenStax text, uh, physics textbook before, you will notice that even the style and the colors are matching to the original textbook. The pedagogy is all there with worked out examples and check your understanding sections. And the, the, the biggest um, power of this particular content pack is in its question, uh, question bank, really. If we go into this document here and we find physics on the list, we see that there is 17 end of chapter assessments that are auto graded. And 90% of the questions in these assessments have been made algorithmic. So all those uh, problems that students are asked to work out um, are randomized so that they can try it multiple times if you wish to use it inside of the lesson. But also it's like a little step into you know, preventing cheating where students on different screens will get different values to work with as they're taking this, these assignments. So again, you can preview um, any of the, a lesson, a sample lesson from any of these packs on digitalets.com slash demo. And you can see that physics um, is right here and you can see kind of the look and feel of the lesson as well. You, can, you do get access to this document with a comprehensive analysis 
Um, and please send us your syllabus. We're happy to look at it for you. If this is a little overwhelming and you need a little help getting started um, because our selection of content is pretty big and uh, we will guide you through which paths are best for you. And we can set up an evaluation, free evaluation access to Mobius, well, where we will preload these packs and let you tinker around and see how this can work for your class that you're building. Hey, hey Polina, the uh, couple questions we're getting that are, are kind of coming up often in the Q&A is regarding uh, chemistry content packs and if that's on the roadmap potentially from open source or open stacks for me or an open source uh, open educational resource like is there anything in the roadmap for the future for that for sure so first of all the chemistry there are some chemistry capabilities inside mobius like the um the specific chemical equation question type where you can ask the students to provide the equation with the reactants and the products and even states um aqueous solid and so on um, we also have uh, a question some question banks so on the page that I showed you in the beginning, digitaled.com slash content, if we scroll all the way down past all of the content packs, there's also some additional free course content and question banks. And under question banks, um, there is actually some chemistry questions that have been created and available to you as a start point as well. And what we do have for OpenStax chemistry, um, it is not listed in our official selection, but we do have the entirety of the text of that uh, textbook brought into Mobius. So that's something that can be made available to you. And we have some additional uh, question banks, some coming from that title, um, chemistry, OpenStax chemistry, and some um, from other sources as well. So please do reach out. There's a, quite a bit you can do uh, teaching chemistry. Uh, you can use third party sources for interactive activities or drawing activities, drawing of chemical um, diagrams, molecules and so on. And we have some sort of some unlisted content in the back that may be available to you. Um, so please do reach out. Perfect. So actually we have two really great questions from Faridin again. Um, do you have any topics on Laplace transforms and Fournier series, potentially? And then also on top of that, after, if we didn't, wouldn't mind showing off how to create an algorithmic question. He's, he's really curious on how to get that, how did I do and try again function within Mobius? And that might take a bit of time here. So that might be one of the final questions we, uh, we are able to answer in today's session. But uh, topics on Laplace transforms and if that's Fourier series, and then uh, showing how to create an algorithmic question would be an excellent uh, way to cap things off. Sure. Um, so full transparency, I have a science background. I've been in natural science sciences. Um, when we're looking for something advanced like Fourier uh, series or something uh, very specific like that, I personally resort to this document and to search function to see if it's covered. So we can certainly do that and you can do that yourselves when you, you get this document. But we also have mathematical experts on the team. So people who have actual math degrees and we can get in touch with you and see if a very particular topic is covered and direct you to which content pack. Um, I can do a search function right now and see if, it's, if it comes up anywhere. I don't see it for now. But again, please do reach out because if, even if we don't have something in the official selection of content packs, we may have some content um, sort of in our back pocket. That's, that has happened before. Uh, so let's touch base on that. In terms of creating algorithmic question, let's just uh, borrow a question from one of the packs and see what it looks like at the back and what the algorithm looks like. So like I showed you before, I'm going to go into content repository, start a bundle. Let's go, for example, into physics. Um, I resort to this one because I was on the curriculum design team of this content pack, so I know my way around a little bit. Um, a bit of a walk in the park for you. Nice, easy one. <laughs> <laughs> it has been a while, but um, yes, this one is uh, definitely more familiar to me as a natural sciences person. Uh, so let's look at a question. Uh, maybe somewhere from this pack. 
this looks this looks clearly like an algorithm question. So let me clone it into my class. Now it's available to me. And let's click edit and see how the algorithm for this question was written. So I can see from um, the get go that it has variables with these dollar signs programmed into the lesson. And I can see that the response that students are putting in is a numerical type of question. But it's not just one answer for all because there's an algorithm at the back, the answer is actually um, a variable as well. So it, it depends, the right answer depends on what variables the students were given. I can go into the algorithm section and I can see exactly what the algorithm, um, how it was written. So I can see that for the mass that was given, um, it's a range from 15 to 35 in intervals of five digits. Um, I can see what the radius is like. It's a range of from 50 to 70 and so on. Um, so you do have full access, not only to the algorithms of questions that are already in the starter bundle, but also we have extensive documentation and onboarding and training on how to write these. Um, I'm going to be transparent. When I first joined Digital Ed, I joined Curriculum Design Team. And like I said, I joined the physics uh, uh, project. And I have zero coding or software development experience before that. And I was able to go through that quick training and ramp up to writing these algorithms within a couple of weeks uh, to answer your question. But yeah, all of these different functions that are that we use to write the algorithms to make the questions randomized are well documented, and you could you I'm sure you would be able to pick them up fairly quickly. Do, do you mind previewing the question quickly, Polina, just to show sure. that uh, applying that algorithmic question base is gonna have what's gonna add the how to how did I do? And, sure. So you can see that as the um, sort of in the source file, I see these variables as. Um, you know, dollar sign variable name. But when I preview it and I see it from the eyes of the student, actual values are assigned to them. So, you know, I can, I can put in an answer, let's say five, how did I do? I got this one wrong. I can grade from this preview to see what um, the worked out solution or that feedback would look like to a student. And of course, like I said before, clicking uh, try again will generate a new set of values. So in this case, as an instructor, I would click refresh and pay attention to these values here. It will generate a new set of values every time a student clicks try another. Awesome, thank you. So uh, there's no more questions in the Q&A. Um, I can't thank you enough for everyone for attending today. We're going to wrap up here. Um, I hope everyone stays safe and uh, we can continue doing these. I look out for the next invite. We're, we're happy to have everyone back for potentially another workshop or webinar again in the future. So thank you so much, everyone. And I uh, hope, we, hope we can all chat again one day soon. Thank you, Nate, for hosting. Thanks, everyone, for attending. All right. Have a great day, everyone. Goodbye. Bye-bye.